Maybe we should skip right to the finale. Hey guys, it's Ash here with Watch Mojo, and these are the top 10 biggest differences in Netflix's One Piece. This is Garb. For this list, we'll be looking at the biggest changes made across Netflix's new adaptation of Ichiro Oda's legendary manga. Watch out for spoilers on the horizon. Number 10. Random Naked Helmepo Probably not the fan service fans might have been expecting, but here it is. Helmepo bearing it all for the East Blue while posing with Zoro's sword. Not sure what else we can say here other than enjoy? Number 9. Buggy Circus In order to fit the entirety of the East Blue arc into eight episodes, a lot had to be condensed, and that included the Straw Hats adventures on Orange Island. Maybe we should skip right to the finale. While they certainly allude to its destruction, the majority of the battle with Buggy takes place in his man-made circus while he holds the town's inhabitants captive as an audience. Sorry for those who wanted to see the Zoro vs. Kabaji fight in full, but the spotlight here is firmly placed on Buggy. <laughs> which is probably for the best, since Jeff Ward as the killer clown is an absolute scene stealer. The chop chop fruit. So you can slice me, and you can dice me, but I'll always put myself back together again. <laughs> Number 8. The Bar Fight Shell's Town in general had plenty of scenes shuffled around, but this is by far the most noticeable. Instead of being shown in a flashback to explain how Zoro ended up captured by the Marines, the fight between Zoro and Helmepo in a bar takes place in real time, with both Luffy and Nami acting as witnesses. Okay. But it's gonna hurt. The fight is fast, fluid, and fun, and despite being an inverse of the source material, works well enough on its own as it reaches the same destination. <laughs> they even manage to fit in the rice ball scene. Mm. Delicious. Now you eat one. Number 7. Mihawk Now this threw us for a loop. Originally, Mihawk made his first appearance at Barati, slicing down Don Krieg's crew before battling it out with Zoro, making a hell of a first impression in the process as the world's greatest swordsman. In the live action, he still arrives at the Barati, but on orders from Garb to capture Luffy. Mihawk, did I catch you in the middle of something? Just killing some time. Though that's hardly the most shocking moment, as we also get a cameo from Don Krieg. You've killed my men. Destroyed my fleet. Why are you after me? You woke me from my nap. Given how he was replaced as a villain of the Barati arc in place of Arlong, Using him as a means to demonstrate Mihawk's power was quite the surprise. We even got to see him slice a ship in half. <laughs> Number 6. Nami in Shellstown The Straw Hat's beloved navigator doesn't canonically join Luffy and Zoro until after the events with Buggy in Orangetown, but in the live action, she's a major player during the fight with the Marines in Shellstown in Episode 1. Can I buy you a drink? Too tall. You like rum? Yeah, sure. Much as the next guy? I'm not asking the next guy. While this means there's a lot less of her playing both sides, the series does double down on the characteristics from the get-go. She's a thief, she's quick on her feet. I'm a transfer from the 77th, sir. What's your name, Private? Nami, sir. I 
put in a request to serve under your command. She's lovably sarcastic, they even manage to hint at some of her trauma in a way that feels natural. Let's get one thing straight. I am never joining anything with you. I hate pirates, hate them. It's certainly one of the most obvious alterations, but a combination of great pacing and Emily Rudd's pitch-perfect performance really makes it work. Number 5. No War at the Shore The culmination of the Syrup Village arc, as any fan will know, is the Straw Hats taking on Kuro and his feline henchmen, with a beach backdrop serving as their battleground. <laughs> For the live-action series, they chose to go with a much smaller, focused conflict. No more hiding who we are. And to be absolutely certain we're not interrupted. Lock the house down. The Straw Hats are instead trapped inside of Kaya's mansion, Mary is permanently killed off, and there's no Django to speak of. In doing so, this series goes for a bigger emphasis on horror as they're hunted by Kuro, who is so deliciously evil that it's impossible to not be entertained. Parents are gone. Your friends are all gone. Even Usopp is gone. It's just you and me, Miss Kaya. It's time to wake up! And hey, at least we got to see Zoro fight Bucci and Sham. Number 4. Battle at the Barati As stated before, Don Krieg isn't a major antagonist in the live-action adaptation. Instead, they decided to use the shortened time frame to further build up Arlong as the first season's big bad. No one owns a sea. Not even a fish man. Not only did we see him interrogate Buggy, but had him and his fishman arrive at the Barati for a pre-Arlong Park showdown against Luffy. This not only serves to establish Arlong's motivation, world building regarding fishman persecution. Most fishmen will be happy to sit at the same table as a human. They want to be treated as equals. You dare stoop so as well as the reveal of Nami being one of his crew, but the fight itself is a pretty decent one. <laughs> if only forgetting to see Taz Skylar's Sanji go shirtless. Holy mutton shots. Number 3. Kobe Oh, you thought you wouldn't see Kobe after the first episode? I've kind of... I've always wanted to be... Marine. You'd be wrong. The Netflix series made the interesting choice to have Kobe and his arc be a secondary focus of the first season, by having him be interwoven into the events of not only Shellstown, but also the incidents with Kuro and Arlong. Sorry to bother you at such a late hour, but we've heard reports of pirates in the area. While there was every danger this could be an unwanted distraction, the time dedicated to Kobe fills in the blanks on how he and Helmeppo develop a friendship, and how he eventually found the courage to be the kind of marine he always wanted to be. It's a nice touch that doubles as world building for newcomers, and the extra scenes between Kobe and Luffy are a plus. Be a good marine. Be a good pirate. Number 2. Zoro vs. Mr. Seven Talk about a deep dive. You may call me Mr. Seven. I represent an organization known as Baroque Works. We are interested in your unique set of skills, Pirate Hunter Roronoa Zoro. For those who were concerned that the showrunners weren't going to do their due diligence and do the right thing by the source material, then we kindly refer you to Zoro's introduction, where he effortlessly cuts down a member of Baroque Works. Does it come with a free face tattoo? My favorite is number one. For long-term fans, the fight between the Pirate Hunter and Mr. Seven was only ever referenced in a throwaway line during the confrontation at Whiskey Peak. <laughs> Instead of just being a reference, it's brought to life in live action as a way to display Zoro's immense skills, as well as an indication at how graphic the violence in this show can get. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Garp That's right, Garp is a major character in the first season of live-action One Piece. This is Garp. Pirates, you say? Raiding on base in Shell's town. <sighs> what did they take? We're not talking about a cameo here. He and Kobe's pursuit of the Straw Hats is an entire narrative thread from the season's beginning to its end, as opposed to his manga debut, which took a hell of a long time to arrive at. <laughs> And yes, we do get the reveal about him being Luffy's grandfather as early on as the season's midpoint. Grandpa? Grandpa? While we're not sure how this will affect the show going forward, we do know one thing. Vincent Reagan is an absolute delight in the role. What are you, Brad? Have it your way. To the extent we're pretty sold on Garp canonically having a Scottish accent. <laughs> oh, not bad, boy. Not bad. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.